Hello all, it's Dennis here again. I'm uh, having a look at phase control motors today. And uh, I've spoken about the brushless DC motors in the past. Uh, the phase controls, they are sort of the early edition varieties. They came out in the earlier split systems and were the first form of variable speed control uh, motor. The difference is that uh, unlike a brushless DC motor, these were AC operation and split phase in design. The brushless DC motors are more common now, reason being is that they're more efficient, consume less power and they have far less motor heat. The phase control motor came out not long after split systems went away from multiple speed tap motors. It was a much more flexible design. However, in order to match a speed reference, the motor had to actually output a tack speed signal. And to do this, the actual rotor's position had to be mapped as it was turning. Now, rotor position signals are typically used when you're trying to use, for instance, a DC brushless driver circuit, and it's trying to work out where the motor's heading to next to fire the appropriate uh, winding sequence to keep it going. But in the case of a phase control motor, it's, it's not required because it works simply on AC induction principles. The position signal, therefore, is really only uh, a speed reference so that the board can actually see how much RPM the uh, motor is doing and then lock a specific speed. Now, the phase control motor gets its name because the phase itself being supplied to the motor is varied or controlled. So we're not necessarily working with a fixed 240 volts Australian New Zealand voltage. We're working with voltages that can be far less than 200. In fact, a lot of motor speeds reach full speed at 200 volts approximately. Now, phase control motors are fairly typical. I'll just show you one I've taken apart here. They come with a connection, which is the power supply connection. Now, the three wires here uh, are basically the supply uh, to the motor, which you can consider an active and neutral, and we also have a connection to a capacitor. The motor itself has got a position signal system on the back of it, which we call a Hall effect sensor, and it's simply just a small pickup board, and the actual Hall effect itself sort of rudimentarily sits uh, right down here. So if we look at that little tiny sensor there, we can see that that there is actually um, the pickup point. We also then have a moving magnet which spins around. So the magnet itself is attached to the rotor uh, and spins around and passes that pickup and provides a signal. Now, the positioning of this pickup is around 120 degrees, and I've drawn a little picture here to show. So if you can imagine a full 360 degree circle, the position is fed back to the board three times per RPM. And when you're talk talking about a timing system, the three positions give it a, a sort of a linear operation. If you are going to time something, the more signals back is a lot more accurate, and especially if you're dealing with lower RPM. Um, with regard to the position itself of 120 degree operation, uh, it's an even distribution of pulse signals back. So basically, the timing would be an even system. However, you can still consider that 120 degrees to be a phase shift between signals, and we're going to see that shortly. Now, the motors themselves uh, have got a tax signal input wire. Now, this one here has three little wires on a plug, which uh, provide a positive power supply, a DC power supply, usually around 12 volts, and one wire is a return signal wire. I've got another one set up here, and you can see we've got a red, black, and a white. Now, the, the red and the black is getting a 12-volt reference signal, DC, and sending back that signal as a pulse from the Hall effect pick up on the white. And that would normally go back to your printed circuit board. Now, the printed circuit board also contains other things that we should be aware of. For instance, uh, there are no capacitors uh, externally fitted for the motor, and the reason for that is that the run capacitor for the motor, which is typically seen on a split phase, is actually part of the circuit board. Like here it is here, for instance. So this is here is actually part of the capacitor circuit itself. So 
you're looking at the capacitor on the board. So if you're looking for spare parts, if you have problems, well, I'm afraid you've got to buy the board to get the capacitor. And you can also see why there, when there is misadventure with motors, they tend to, one tends to be like taking the other out if you've got a serious problem. And a lot of people do replace motors and boards together when there's been a, a serious event like that. Now, I'll also show you the arrangement for the uh, Hall Effect pickup. In this case, the 120 degree signal will be generated three times per one RPM. Now, I've set up my little vintage oscilloscope here. And what I'm showing you is a straight six volt power supply, which I've actually fitted from this battery. Now, I know it usually uses 12 volts, but I'm just using a six volt battery today. It'll work the same. And you can actually see that when I wind the motor around, it's actually providing that signal. OK, it's easy to see on an oscilloscope. If I look at the motor when I turn it, I'm getting that signal basically three times per RPM which is my 120 degree position. I fitted the pickup sensor uh, from the Crow into the sensor reference wire back at the plug. Now, we can actually see the phase shift uh, from the position signal system if I actually turn it fast enough. When we start going a little faster, you'll notice that you start to see what appears to be a little bit of a square wave forming. And you'll see it's moving sort of left and right which is indicating the sort of phase shift that we have with uh, the operation of the motor. Now, when the position signals are firing at every 120 degree uh, interval, um, they're out of phase with each other. So they're not occurring at the same time. And you tend to see that on the actual crow here, where you've got that little uh, uh, pulse, which is sort of moving left and right. And I'm trying to keep a relatively even speed on this. If we go really, really fast, it becomes sort of one big, one big signal. Okay. Now, the phase control motor will be sent a voltage and it will provide a specific amount of tap signals back from the pickup. And when those signals, RPM, match the actual index speed which the board has been programmed for, um, the speed itself has been reached and it will fix it at that point. Unlike the brushless DC motor, the brushless motor here um, has got two things. It has Hall Effect pickups to provide position signal, but it also has a converter on it which converts a single phase DC supply to a three phase AC supply. So it becomes a three phase motor. And it actually is a very efficient motor. The phase control motor really is only using the position signal system to reference speed. And if we have a look at the one that I've taken apart here, Unlike uh, the DC motor, if I sort of bang that out a bit, you can actually see that it is nothing more than just a squirrel cage motor. So it doesn't provide the same efficiencies on power as the brushless DC would, but it's still a cheaper alternative. So some of the uh, more economic air conditioners are going to have that type of uh, uh, motor fitted to them. Uh, basically, when you're testing these, if they lose their position signal feedback, the boards always try and uh, feed more power to the motor to compensate. So they will tend to speed up very fast. And I have shown you that with the brushless DC position fail video that I've done in the past. When it comes to testing them, there isn't a great deal you have to worry about. Look, you can effectively just get a um, meter and read the circuit of the split phase motor here uh, across the, in this case, the, the black and the white, which is the primary supply power. And you can do exactly what I've done. You can actually reference the power supply coming into the board with a multimeter and turn the motor around by hand to see if that signal's being fed back. It's very um, simple in that regard. So the phase control really is a very simple operation motor and not a very complicated motor to test. Now, I warn you, they don't come apart like this. I had to basically destroy that to show you what that, um, that looked like. Uh, so there are really no serviceable parts in, in the actual uh, phase control motor. Uh, when you service this, uh, there isn't a much that you've got to worry about. You've only really got to test primary resistance uh, on the motor and then do what I've done. Uh, you can reference if you're getting a supply from the board across in this case, it would be the red and black and turn the motor around by hand and see if you're getting a signal between the black 
and the white. Well, on this particular one, that would be DC negative and the reference voltage coming back. And the only other thing to remember also is that the capacitor for split phase motors, um, which is always in series with the start winding parallel to the run, is part of the printed circuit board, as I'm showing you right here. This is it here. It is not a serviceable part. You can see the little capacitor symbol on the back of the board. So if you do have a problem with this, if there is a burnout or a problem here, you've got to replace the whole board. You cannot get individual components to replace them. So the limitations on service really are that you're going to either have to replace a motor with a fault or you're going to have to replace a motor and board as a combination. But look, to be honest with you, that situation is not much different when we talk about the brushless DC. They have uh, similar issues as well, but for very different reasons. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, folks. I'll see you again.